Um, the next part of the question is compute the per capita electricity consumption and per capita primary energy use for Sweden in 2016. This is simple, just, uh, just divide these numbers and you get just take the total population divided by the total electricity use kilowatt hour divided by the population and you get 13,838 kilowatt hour per capita. Primary energy if we again we divide 2048 into 10 raised to 15 by 9.9 .9 into 10 raised to 6 turns out to be 207 gigajoules per capita. Now we can compare it with the primary energy um, <coughs> per capita for India and the world and you can see that the primary energy is supply, uh, the per capita for Sweden is greater than that of the world average and greater than that of India, which is as we expected, but we have been able to quantify. Um, so, how uh, then the question is comment on these values, how do these link with development? But typically what happens is that uh, with a higher level of income, you would have a higher requirement of electricity use and you can see that very clearly uh, that in the e e Indian context, the energy use and the electricity use is significantly lower than that for Sweden. Um, we have also the next table shows us the Sweden electricity sector mix in hydro, nuclear, or wind and solar and, and the generation. So, you, we can see very clearly that in this particular case, uh, there is a significant amount of um, then, then the total including the thermal, if you look at it, the installed capacity um, of hydro is quite significant and, the, the, and uh, we can see that uh, hydro and wind together is a significant proportion of the total. So, we should uh, then the question asked is compare the capacity factor of the wind and nuclear plants for Sweden. Uh, so, this is fairly straightforward because we have the installed capacity and the uh, generation and all that we need to do is that we need to find out the capacity factor. So, in the case of wind, the generation is 15 point, uh, if you see 15.5 terawatt hours, that is 15.5 into um, terawatt is 10 raised to 12 watt hours and if you want to make it in kilowatt hours, this will be 10 raised to 9 kilowatt hours divided by let us look at the installed capacity of wind. Installed capacity of wind is 6520 megawatt, which is into 10 raised to 3 kilowatt and into the total number of hours is 24 into 365 or 8760. This is the maximum generation possible if all the wind capacity is operating continuously at its rated value, right. So, this will be also in kilowatt hours. This becomes a factor which is the capacity factor. We can, you can calculate this and you will find that this turns out to be 0 0.267, 267 percent. It is a fairly high, for wind it is a fairly high capacity. Uh, the Indian wind uh, regime capacity factors are much lower, it is like 14, 15 percent on an average. But, and, and, but also remember that this is going to be lower than that which is there for the base load coal or thermal uh, plants. It, we will also see that it is actually going to be lower than the nuclear. Let us look at the nuclear, same way let us calculate the nuclear. In the case of nuclear, we are told that it is 60.5. So, we can do in the same fashion and uh, nuclear is 9075, 
75 into 10 raised to 3 into 8760. Calculate this, you find 0 0.761, 76.1%. We are also asked to compare the capacity factor of this. Obviously, capacity factor of nuclear is higher. We expect that. It runs at a base load plant. Wind will, uh, the capacity factor is constrained by the supply of the wind. And now we are asked to compare the carbon intensity of Sweden's energy sector with India and to comment on the emission intensity of Sweden's power sector as compared to India. So, in order to do this, the carbon intensity, let us see, we have the total CO2 emissions which is given to us as uh, CO2 emissions million tons. Let us take it for 2016. This is 36 million tons and this is to be um, divided by the amount of electricity that we are generating and the total, or, sorry we are doing it per unit of primary energy. So, by 2048 primary energy And this is in peta joule, so this is 10 raised to 15. If we want to do this in terms of kg, we will have a 10 raised to 3 factor. And you will find when you calculate this, this comes out to be 36,000 by 2048. Seventeen point six kg of CO2 per gigajoule. Okay. Let us look at now what were these India numbers. CO2 per primary energy for India and the world are almost the same. Sweden is lower than this. And uh, the reason for this is that if you look at Sweden, there is a significant share of uh, renewables and hydro. And India is predominantly coal based and with the result that uh, we expect that the emissions intensity of Sweden's power sector is going to be lower than that uh, for in, in India, significantly lower than that of India. Uh, the next part of the question is we was asked to use the Kaya, using the Kaya identity, comment on the changes in the carbon intensity of energy. Uh, the energy intensity of the economy for Sweden during 2010 to 2016 uh, and then compare this energy intensity with energy intensity of India. What does the energy intensity reflect? Does a lower energy intensity imply more ef energy efficient e economy? So, let us look at the Kaya identity. If you look at for Sweden for 2016, the total CO2 emissions CO2 emissions is 38. So, this is 38 by 2048. This is CO2 per unit energy into energy per unit GDP. E by GDP into GDP per population into population. And on the next year, this becomes 46. In, in this is, this is, sorry, this is the recent year 2016. In 2010, it was 46, which was 46 by 2132 into 2132 by 391. Let us just check which years it was. Uh, Let us see the values. 46 is the, sorry, 46 yeah, 46 is for 2010, 
and this is for uh, in 2010 we had this as 2132 and uh, the uh, um, purchasing power parity this was 391 and then this was 391 by 9.3 into 9.3. So, if you look at this first term in 2016, 2010, this turns out to be um, uh, the number is uh, CO2 kgs. Uh, you see what happens in this case is that we have a decrease in the carbon intensity. 38 by 2048 um, is less than 46 by 2132. There is a, a carbon intensity of energy uh, decreases uh, and uh, this decreases from uh, uh, this decreased by about 14 percent. The uh, energy use per, uh, so there is an overall decrease in the CO2 emissions because the carbon intensity has decreased as well as the energy intensity of the economy. So, that means both these numbers when you say 38 by 2048. Um, and to, uh, has decreased this 38 by 2048 is less than 46 by 2132 this is decreased and similarly 2048 by 448 is less than 2132 by 391. So, both the carbon intensity CO2 per unit of energy has decreased as well as energy per unit of GDP has decreased. So, even though the GDP increased and the population increased, overall the total CO2 emissions uh, has decreased. So, this is the situation for Sweden. Um, the, then the next part of the question is that comment on the uh, compare the carbon intensity uh, e energy intensity compare the energy intensity with the energy intensity for india uh, the energy intensity of uh, sweden is similar to that of india um, but it is uh, uh, less than if you look at this values uh, the energy intensity uh, um, per unit of GDP if we are looking at that in the case of India it is about um, 4.6 megajoules per US do, uh, dollars and in the case of um, Sweden when we uh, when we calculated this uh, you, we saw that it is almost similar. Um, the next point was that The, what does the energy intensity reflect? Energy intensity reflects, can reflect the uh, efficiency in your uh, system. If you have a more efficient use of energy, uh, then we would have this um, uh, the energy intensity per unit of output uh, would decrease. But does an energy in lower energy intensity imply a more energy efficient economy? This is not necessarily true because the e energy intensity of the economy also depends on the structure of the economy. Where does the GDP come from? If the e economy produces more e industrial goods, uh, the energy requirement is higher. If it is more in manufacturing, if you are doing steel, cement, aluminum, we need more energy. However, if the energy intent, uh, the GDP is coming from the services sector, the energy requirements are less. So, lower energy intensity, if the structure of the economy is the same and the GDP is coming from the same sectors, then of course, if you have a lower energy intensity, it means that we have become more efficient. But if the structure has changed, it is possible that a lower energy intensity uh, can be done because 
we have shifted from manufacturing to services and even though we haven't improved the efficiency. <coughs> so then the last question which is there in the paper is comment on the difference in perspectives and strategies for Sweden and India vis-a-vis -vis the global climate change negotiation. So the first point which should be kept in mind is that Sweden when we look at the um, uh, CO2 um, per population, it is significantly uh, higher than that of India. Uh, uh, it is also the, uh, the uh, it is about 3.83 tons per capita. Uh, the income is higher than that of uh, India. So, uh, Sweden would be one of the countries uh, which would be considered as a developed country. It has also um, now gone to a stage where the energy use per capita is significantly higher than is higher than the world average. It has an onus to reduce its uh, uh, energy intensity. It is fortunate that it already has a, a mix of energy which is uh, less uh, carbon. Uh, 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 which is the CO2 per unit of energy is lower than that of the uh, of India or of the world average. And um, the negotiation strategy for Sweden would be where it is trying to actually stabilize and it is uh, it is already contributing more to the problem. It is it's in one of those uh, countries which has already utilized a reasonable part of the uh, of its CO2 budget. India on the other hand is a developing country where the uh, all the different components, uh, the infrastructure is not yet in place and we still need significant increase in the basic energy services. Sweden may have almost saturated in terms of energy services. Uh, so in a sense there are, we are approaching the problem from different perspectives. India wants to have space to grow. and try to grow that sustainably which is reflected in our um, uh, Paris commitments. Sweden on the other hand could take a stance that we would like to try and minimize but it would uh, try to, uh, it is already one of the countries which is, which is one of the, uh, on a per capita basis a higher emitter. It would like to negotiate for emission targets based on per GDP rather than per capita, India would like to negotiate based on the per capita basis. Um, however, having said that, Sweden is actually um, one of the countries which has been uh, pushing for higher um, renewables and uh, strategies which will uh, reduce and mitigate climate change. Sweden has also made ambitious targets and as you saw over the years uh, in this uh, time period 2010 to 2016 the overall CO2 emissions have actually declined. Um, so they, the, from the Paris agreement point of view different countries could have different perspectives based on uh, what is their status and what is their expected growth. Uh, so with this we complete the solution of this paper. You may want to just uh, look at how you have performed. And then if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, mail those to us.